and welcome back to the channel on our continuing voyage to become better blues players. My name's Mark and in this lesson we're going to look at the intro solo to Crosscut Saw by Albert King. It's one of the most famous blues guitar solos there is. So, the way the lesson's going to work, you're going to see me play the intro solo over a backing track and then we'll come back on the other side and I'll pull all the licks apart and show you them one by one and we'll talk about the rhythm and chords as well. So, here's the solo. Was the example there and what we'll do now is pull those licks apart one by one but before we do a little bit of housekeeping as i record this we are a whisker under 30,000 subscribers and youtube tells me that the majority of people who watch my channel don't subscribe so please hit subscribe because in two weeks time the follow-up lesson to this is going to be the main solo to crosscut saw and if you want to be notified of that please hit subscribe so youtube tells you Okay, tab. There is tab available for this lesson. If you would like a free copy of the tab, please send me an email. My details are in the description below. Ask for Crosscut Saw Intro Solo, and next time I'm online, I'll simply reply to your email and attach the PDF of the tab. Okay, one more thing to mention. I've just played this solo in the key of A. The original recording, Albert King plays it in the key of B, and the reason why I've moved it to A is because this is all working towards a lesson where we're going to look at playing generally in the style of Albert King and using Albert King's influence in our own licks. And I'm going to do that in the key of A. So I move this into the key of A. However, if you want to play along with the original uh, track, you simply move everything up two frets. In the tab, if you email me and ask me for the tab, in the tab that I send back, it will have the song both in A and in B, so you can choose whichever version you want. Okay, that's all over. Oh, one more thing. Nobody can play like Albert King. He restrung the guitar in a different way. He played it left-handed and all those kind of stuff. I'm actually going to make a separate video about why Albert King is so unique and what we can do to kind of get as close as we can. So these licks aren't exactly how he played them because I haven't restrung my guitar and done all those kind of crazy stuff. But this is as close as I think we can get with a regular strung guitar. Okay, so there are some very subtle differences and I'll go over those in the um, in a separate video. Okay, all of that out the way, let's get on with the licks. Lick one goes like this. One, two, three. Okay, and nice and slow. One, two, three. Okay, one more time, nice and slow. One, two, three. Okay, in, important thing about this one is there is a count, a four count before the band come in. We come in just after the three. So you count one, two, three. And on the end, you then jump in with this lick so that you land that last note there when the rest of the band come in. Okay, so that's lick one. Lick two then goes like this. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, and I'll do it nice and slow. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, and again, nice and slow. Okay, and back up to speed. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, then we get that that bar plays out, and then we get a full empty bar where we don't play anything. So this is where, in my mind, I'm counting one, two, three, four, and then coming in as the band change over to the D chord. So uh, lick three, then we'll go like this. One, two, three, four. 
Okay, and nice and slow. And again, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. And up to speed. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that was Lick 3. One thing to mention about Lick 3, on the original, Alba King actually comes in a little earlier than the bar. I'm playing it, so I come in bang on when the chord changes. In the original, he actually, well, his timing's very loose anyway, and we'll see more of that when we learn the, the full solo. But this, he, if you're playing along with the original track, he comes in a little earlier, and it's kind of really hard to count and, and get there exactly. He's not thinking of it doing it exactly in counting it, he's just feeling it. Um, I find it easier to feel to come in exactly on the beat. Okay, that was lick three, lick four now goes like this. Um, it comes in off the back of lick three, and then goes. Okay, so lick four would then go like this. One, two, three, four, one. And nice and slow. And once more, nice and slow. Okay, and up to speed. One, two, three, four, one. Okay. Then we get that bar ends, we're into the next bar. I do have to count this one to make sure I come in on, uh, on time. Basically, I count three, and then we come in with this lick. One, two, three. Okay, and again. One, two, three. And nice and slow. One, two, three. And again, nice and slow. One, two, three. Okay, and then that brings us into lick six. Lick six comes right in on the back of that and it goes like this. Okay. And um, I'll take it kind of nice and slow. Okay, lick six is gonna flow right into lick seven. Actually, uh, five, six, and seven kind of flow together, but it's easier, I find it easier to break them down into these little chunks. Um, so I'll do that one again, uh, nice and slow. Lick six. Okay, now I'll be honest, when I was learning this one, this one I struggled with a little bit because the jump between playing this full, uh, this um, full bend on the eight, back to eight, and then off to five, but on a different string. So this bit that goes like this. Okay, that jump to that five there, that felt really unnatural to me. I wanted to actually jump to the five on the same string. I actually, I felt this feels to me more natural. But he doesn't, he jumps to uh, to this E note, which is the B string at the fifth fret. Back your head, I messed it up there, but it, again, be this. Okay, so then we get um, this lick, which uh, comes in after this. Which is really the Alba King signature turnaround lick. Although he ends it with this additional note, which he doesn't do when he plays this lick or some variation on this lick in other parts of the song. And he uses this lick in other songs as well. But uh, yeah, once more, here it goes. And this is as the band's hitting a turnaround. Uh, let's do it again. Lick seven, up to speed, goes like this. And um, let's do it nice and slow. Starts with this pull off. And again, nice and slow. 
and you notice how I'm just dragging that note slightly sharp. Okay, so let's do um, relatively slow. I'm going to do lick five, six, and seven together. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so there we go. Uh, let's just talk quickly about the 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 backing track, the chord progression. I already mentioned it a little bit. Um, it's a 12 bar blues. At the end of the 12 bar blues, the last bar, the band don't go to the five chord, the band stay on the one chord. Um, you could play this song and move to the five chord and it sounds just as good. Nobody'd ever notice, kind of do however you feel. Um, it's the point of these old blues standards, you're supposed to interpret them, you know, um, however you want to interpret them. I will talk briefly about the uh, the rhythm part. There is a second guitar play. You can only just about hear them on the re on the record. It's not Albert King, but whoever the guitar player is, the the rhythm guitar player, they're doing this. Okay, and he ba basically doing that for the uh, the one chord, then for the five four chord, doing the same thing, but fret five to fret seven. Okay, so it's three stabs on what is a G, and then two on an A, um, and then the same thing for the for the E chord. It's two stabs on a D to an E. Sorry, three stabs on the D and two on the E, which is fret seven to fret nine. Okay, and that's what he's doing over the um, the, the different chord progressions, um, the different chords in the progression. Um. When I play this, I kind of give it a little bit more of a bounce. I don't play quite so staccato, so I don't do this. I'll do it more kind of. I prefer it like that. It kind of has a bit more swing, but however you want. Anyway, um, right. So I think that's it. That's the whole, the, the whole solo, uh, the intro solo. Come back next time because we'll look at the main solo. Hope you've enjoyed this. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. What I'll do now is I'll put the whole solo back up um, again, but with the Patreon names to say thank you. So until next time, take care. I'll see you soon.